Hey YouTube, Maple Anglican here. This video is part of a series on Anglicanism and designed to educate other Protestants and why exactly we're Catholic, yet Protestant. So without further ado, Anglicanism for Protestants, Anglicans, and the Sacraments. Now, depending on what Protestant denomination or group you belong to, you are very likely aware of the sacraments, specifically baptism and the Eucharist, commonly called communion or the Supper of the Lord. The 16th century Anglican theologian Richard Hooker said that a sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. We also hold that with the sacraments, there is a form and a matter in which the sacraments is carried out. Within Anglicanism, we believe that there are seven sacraments, like Roman Catholics, unlike most Protestants who believe there are two. However, unlike Roman Catholics, we organize the sacraments into two groups, the sacraments of the gospel and sacraments, but not to be counted for sacraments of the gospel. The sacrament of baptism is how we are initiated into the church, cleansed of original sin, and are regenerated into spiritual life. The Catechism of the Church, which can be found in the Book of Common Prayer, states of baptism, What is the outward visible sign in baptism? Water, in which the person is baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What is the inward and spiritual grace in baptism? A death unto sin, and a new birth into righteousness. For being by nature born into man's sinful state, we are hereby made children of grace by the power of the Holy Spirit. The person being baptized will either be immersed in water three times or have water poured over their head three times with the Trinitarian formula, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anglicans, like most Protestants, Roman Catholics, and Orthodox Christians, do practice infant baptism, which has been practiced since antiquity. The Eucharist, communion, or the Supper of the Lord, is the central act of gathered worship. The Eucharist is a memorial to Christ's sacrifice on the cross. In the Eucharist, we receive Christ's body and blood sacramentally. Anglican views on Christ's presence in the Eucharist is divided, with opinions ranging from the Roman Catholic doctrine of transubstantiation to Zygwillian memorialism, with the majority of Anglicans accepting a number of real presence explanations other than transubstantiation. There is no official Anglican explanation on how the real presence is obtained, or to what extent. The Catechism of the Church, found in the Book of Common Prayer, states the following, What is the outward part or sign of the Lord's Supper? The bread and wine which the Lord hath commanded to be received. What is the inward part or thing signified? The body and blood of Christ, which are verily and indeed taken and received by the faithful in the supper of the Lord. Anglican theologians teach that baptism and the Eucharist are generally necessary to salvation, while the additional sacraments, which do result in grace being received, are not generally necessary to salvation. The sacrament of confession an absolution, sometimes called reconciliation, is a sacrament in which those who repent of their sins may confess them to God in the presence of a priest. The priest will give the penitent assurance of pardon and the grace of absolution. This sacrament can be undertaken either corporally, that is, in a group such as a church service, or orally, that is, privately with a priest. A corporate confession is usually part of a Sunday service, whether it be during morning prayer or part of a communion service. The Sacrament of Ordination, or Holy Orders, is the sacrament by which God gives the authority and grace of the Holy Spirit to those entering into ministry, particularly bishops, priests, and deacons. The conveying of the Sacrament of Ordination to others is limited to bishops. The bishop will ordain the new minister through prayer and the laying on of hands upon them. The Sacrament of Confirmation is when a mature commitment to Christ is expressed, and in doing so, the confirmand's relationship with God is strengthened through prayer and the laying on of hands by a bishop. The confirmand will renew their baptismal vows in the presence of a bishop, and then the bishop will lay their hands upon the confirmand and may anoint them with oil as part of the sacrament. Confirmation used to be a requirement for Anglicans to receive the Eucharist, but this is no longer required. In Anglicanism, only a bishop can confer this particular sacrament. The sacrament of matrimony, or marriage, is the blessing of a lifelong union between a man and a woman that is manifested in the vows that they have made before God and the Church, and receive the grace and blessing of God and the Church to help them fulfill their vows. A minister will preside over the marriage and act as a witness for the church, but does not confer the sacrament, as it is the bride and groom who do so. The sacrament of anointing the sick, sometimes called extreme unction, involves a priest laying hands and or anointing with oil on someone who is either sick and or dying. In this sacrament, grace is given for the healing of the mind, body, and spirit. 
the priest may also administer the Eucharist with this sacrament. Anglicans, like Roman Catholics, view that some of these sacraments, namely baptism, confirmation, and ordination, leave a seal or sacramental character on someone and thus cannot be repeated. Thus, if it is believed that one of these three sacraments may have been carried out already on someone, but there is doubt it will be carried out conditionally. One thing I should mention is that Anglicans believe that these seven sacraments are by no means the only way we can receive grace from God. If you have any questions about Anglicanism, please feel free to send me a message or post a comment on this or any of my videos. So please rate, please comment respectfully, and please subscribe. And thank you for watching.